Well, we're here at the Bee Search Lab, uh, Premier Bee Products, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Jeff, we've had a lot of fun the last couple of days, haven't we? You can't have more fun than we've had. I appreciate you inviting us out to, uh, to see the factory and then spend so much time in the field. It has been a blast. I tell you what, there is nothing more fun than hunting pheasants in South Dakota. Yeah. Now, the weather could have cooperated a little more, but it didn't didn't hurt. Well, that's why they call it hunting and not target practice. That's right. You know, we spend, you know, a couple days out there. It's um, between 19, 23 degrees, 30 miles an hour wind, maybe gusts, 35, snow blowing across. If you're a northerner or if you're out here, there's a certain beauty to that too. Yes, there is. When you got to work hard to stay warm, to uh, dig in there, it was so much fun. Pheasant hunting is just like peanut butter and jelly here in South Dakota. Yep. I, I grew up doing it. That's one of the things I love doing more than anything is pheasant hunting with your dog, your kids, your friends. It's it, it's a great sport. Yeah. Um, if you've ever, if you've seen some of the early uh, Premier Bee Products videos, uh, you've seen Hank and Ellie in yeah. those, uh, and it was an honor to be able to go out and be in the field, um, not only with, with with Jeff and some really great folks, but the dogs. Yep. Pheasant hunting with your dog is just about as good as it can get. It, it is. What I've always loved is just spending time watching the dogs work. Yep. That's a, that's a super neat thing. Um, you know, recently um, in our family, we, we lost the, uh, the, the patriarch of the family, old Fred. And Fred was an avid uh, gun dog enthusiast, was always out um, working at birds, taught us all a lot. It was, um, it was a lot of fun to come out here and to be able to, to bring back uh, some pheasants in his honor was, was absolutely awesome. It was just such a good time. And you had Fred's gun. Right. Okay. The very first shot today when Greg had his uh, wife's grandfather's shotgun, he hit the bird. It was textbook. It was perfect oh. in Fred's honor. That was, um, you know, it's going to choke me up a little bit, but... As we're going into the field today, I'm thinking about Fred and you kind of going through those memories of being out in the field. Fred hunted with German short hair pointers. Yep. And you did something special for me today. Your dogs are awesome. Yep. Hank and Nelly, the labs are, are fantastic. It's a lot of fun hunting with the labs. Um, but old Fred uh, raised and bred and hunted with, with short hairs. Yep. German short hair pointers. Um, and where we hunted today, that's what we took out with us. Mm -hmm. It was very special to be out in the field working with German short hair pointers, uh, pointing and flushing up pheasants. And that one bird comes up and you could hear him flush. You could hear him squabble, squabble, squabble. And he comes up and you know, when you're shooting somebody else's gun, it's, it's never really a quite fit for you. And so you're worried about placement and the beads. And I was, I was worried so much about that coming out. But when it was time to go, the dogs pointed, the birds flew up. The bird came up from right to left I ca without even looking at the beads. The gun came up and it was boom and the bird went straight down. Yep. You know, I never met Fred, but you've got to know Fred is up there looking down at you. Yeah. He was smiling. Oh, man. Yeah, that was it was an honor to be able to to, to shoot some birds yeah. uh, for old Fred there. It took everything I had um, not to start crying my eyes out when that yeah. happened. So, I, so would, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity yeah. to come out, Jeff. I would guess Fred was thinking, you know, my granddaughter wasn't such, it wasn't such a bad <laughs> choice after all. <laughs> um, so we've had a lot of fun out in the field, uh, yep. spending time with, with you folks here too. Uh, and I've just also just, what a great time we've had uh, taking a look at how Premier uh, is making and manufacturing these awesome products. I tell you what, we, it's just been a whirlwind around Premier for the last three and a half years. Um, but we've, I've been working really, really hard on getting together our uh, entries into the woodenware line um, with with our boxes and, and the frames, and it has been uh, it's been great. The reception's been extremely well. Um, we got the plant up and running, um, but there's a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh. what's, what's been great is when we met. Um, Boy, how long has that been now? Two years? A couple of years. A couple of years. Yep. When we first sat down and interviewed with you and got to know who Jeff Johnson is, yep. who Premier is um, as a company, we had, we had the history of, of trialing 
um, the, the foundation and seeing that the bees were choosing that foundation in all of our trials, that no matter which mix of foundation manufacturers we put in there, the bees were constantly going back and choosing the premier foundation. And, and I, I call you and I say, what is going on here? And we started to build that relationship and that's all, we switched everything to that. And in, in doing so, um, it has been a force multiplier for us in the field because the bees choose to just to go right to it. Yep. And it's just, that that's an amazing attribute to have frames in a box that the bees just go to town drawing. Um, it's just, it's it's been a huge um, win um, for us. And then, so as you started to, to developing these other lines, we were equally excited thinking, when you set off to build a better mousetrap with the foundation, yep. When you were talking about taking things to the next level with the woodenware line, I was really excited to see what is Jeff up to. Well, you, you, if you think about it, Greg, we didn't have um, a shop full of equipment that, well, we got to figure out how to make it with this equipment. We were building a shop and we had to come up with the equipment. And so we that gave us the advantage of being able to look at, okay, how could we make things better? And then we got the equipment that allow us to make it better. It is important that we make the best quality product we can make, because that's what Premier is, that's right. who we are. And it was an advantage to us, I feel, to start from scratch instead of taking something that had already been done. I mean, the Beehive Box has been the Beehive Box for a hundred years, um, but that doesn't mean that the tools and machinery to make a beehive box haven't gotten better in the mm, last hundred years. True. Um, and so me and my team were able to figure out to, from our research and talking with, you know, the Dakotas, we've got a bunch of commercial beekeepers right. are out here in the sure. Dakotas. Lots of them have become my friends. And as you know, with the beekeeper, when you ask them for some advice, everybody likes to give you their advice. <laughs> and I did right. that with my friends yeah. and everybody kind of told me what they thought would make a box better. And I compiled all those things and it kind of turned out they, regardless how they set it, there's kind of three columns of things that people thought could be better. You could have a better joint, you could do something better with the frame rest, and you could do the handle better. Yep. And then we had to sort through how to do it. And once we kind of thought, well, this might be a way to do it, then we had to figure out how to manufacture it that way. Yep. And it wasn't me, it's my team. Um, I've got an outstanding team of people and they're all in at 110%, so we just figure out how to do it. You know, that's an important, you know, what you said there is we get so caught up if we're used to doing something or you take an industry that's been around forever, things are done a certain way and all uh, of how you move forward with it is based on where you've been in the past. And sometimes that can put you in the cycle to where you're so stuck into this is the box, this is the handle, this is what things should look like. You, you don't even, be able, you, you can't think literally outside of the box. Right. But with, um, for more on Jeff's story on how he went from, um, car wash owner to premier B products um, extraordinaire. Um, check out that early interview. We'll put a link in the description. Um, but in short, you came into this with fresh eyes. Yes. Not from the beekeeping industry. And I think that is so huge because you came into it with a completely different lens um, and have really changed um, the face of beekeeping when it comes to woodenware. Yeah. Um I really want to be able to do for woodenware what we did with foundation. Yeah. And you know, the big difference for us with foundation was we didn't have experience um, in plastics. We didn't have an experience in bees. And it seemed like to me, the thing to make sense would be let mother nature and the bees tell you what the foundation should mm -hmm. be. And then we had to figure out how to do it, <laughs> um, which took a lot of time. Yeah. And uh, again, with, with boxes, um, let the experts, all these big commercial beekeepers, tell me what you want. Yep. And then I had to figure out how to do it. Yep. So that's kind of how we came up with it. 
that that's a that's a big deal. It's one thing to make something that you think everyone is supposed to use or everyone thinks they're supposed to use, right. um, but to be able to take something to the to the next level. You know, a lot of us beekeepers, we have big mitts for hands. Um, folks that have smaller hands, you're in gloves, and so the standard cutout for a bee handle, there's just not enough meat on there, no matter what you do. That's right. Um, and that's what I, one one of the one of the fantastic features of these boxes is there is so much room um, to get in there and grab the boxes. They are just so incredibly comfortable to grab. And when you're pulling, you know, deep boxes of honey, that makes a big difference. So they're more comfortable to move, to stack, to put on the truck. We joke around with beekeeping. If you've ever made your own bee box, whether you rough cut the lumber yourself or you're going to the, a box store and buying just a slab of pine, you tend to joke around and say, it's just a bee, we're not building furniture, it's just a bee box. But some of the things that you're doing with these, with these bee boxes are absolutely, not only are they gorgeous on how the wood is joined, um, but the strength of the box, when you're using cabinet grade dovetail joinery, it seems like you're, you're doing a couple things. It's making that corner very strong. When you go to assemble those boxes, they self-square. Yes. And then you have less ingrain exposed to the weather. Yeah, there's about 25% less ingrain. That's a big a, deal. On a dovetail joint versus this traditional finger joint. Yeah. Yep. And you know, I didn't figure all this stuff out, but again, I mentioned earlier it was my team, but w my uh, lead woodenware engineer is a guy that has been for the last 27 years, I think, the lead engineer for 12 engineers at one of the largest commercial cabinet uh, manufacturers in the United States, which it's right here in Sioux Falls. And um, when Bart found out what we were doing with bee boxes or thinking about doing, getting into woodenware, he came to me and wanted to be involved. Yeah. And all I had to be was smart enough to not get in his way. And um, he's grabbed the project, he's run with it, he's teaching my, my everyday staff here how to make these things be almost as good as furniture. Yeah. Yes. That's a big deal. You mentioned the teamwork aspect. Um, it's been awesome meeting your entire team, um, but visiting uh, Bart, seeing Bart in his element at the scale that he's operating, to be able to, to bring that element mm -hmm. into the woodenware industry is huge. Um, so not only are you able to make a box that's more comfortable to grab, to move, uh, to just pick up, you've got those stronger corners that are going to last a lot longer. Um, and one of, one of my favorite features um, of these boxes is how beefy the frame rest is. All we had to do was look and listen to the commercial beekeeper and figure out um, a way that made that frame rest um, more stable and gave that very top uh, corner more uh, structural integrity. So when you're taking your hive tool and you're prying it out, you're not breaking the frame breaking rest, the frame rest off. right off. Yep, exactly. Yep. That is a giant, you know, it, it happens. You know, sometimes the word that the grain lines up on a brand new box, you try to train yourself not to stick your hive tool in and pry out, but sometimes you do. Um, and when that snaps off, you're just like, ah, but there's so much extra meat on the corners of those. It is just like, wow. You know, if you take a box like this, um, and no matter what your preference is on coating or sealing, you take a box that is going to last an extremely long time, significantly longer, at least in my opinion, um, in boxes that might be put together differently. Yes. And you're definitely going to spend, you're not going to have re the rework time like you would on something to try to put it back into use. Yep. That's a big deal. Yep. Well, and especially for the commercial beekeepers up here in the Dakotas, you know, they've got 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 hives. Yeah. And if they can touch, you know, have to rework a box, say every 15 years instead of every eight years, that saves them a ton. Time and money. Yep. That's a really big deal. It's been incredible to actually, it's one thing to sit here and look at a box that looks awesome and all these features sound like they make sense. Um, but to have these boxes out in the field and actually spend the entire season throwing them around, stacking them up, putting bees in them, they have been an absolute joy uh, to work with in the bee yard. So not only are, are you making a bee box yep. that is built for the beekeeper, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're also doing uh, some fun things with the woodenware in the frames. Yes. Um, and, and again, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, good frames out sure. there. Um, but in talking with the commercial guys, there was some need to rework the end bar to especially be used with automated um, extraction lines. Yeah. And so we 
actually I think we've got one here. We, we reworked our end bar um, so it can um, go through the automated extraction lines without uh, catching up yep. and jamming. And not that every frame jammed in an automated extracting line, but it seemed like the first time or two they went through till they kind of got the corners wore off and things, that's when they would, would jam up and just create havoc when you're trying to extract. So we put a lot of time and effort and energy into figuring out how to give that beekeeper what they needed, again, so they could operate efficiently. Yeah. Um, and so that's uh, what got us in the frame business. It's, it's you know, it's the little details. What, what I like about what Premier what you guys do here is you have a product and then you actively solicit the feedback for it to continue to dial it in, to tune it up, to make it the best possible product um, that's out there. J I mean, just the little details like that and make a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're wonderfully smooth. The profile, um, not only are the end bars, the top bar, um, the bottom bar with having the extra meat underneath to catch, all those things end up to have a frame that is in use longer. Right. And that's a big deal. Yep. It, it makes their life easier. Yep. That's fantastic. With the, uh, with the foundation, a lot of folks are already familiar with the foundation. We've talked about that earlier. The foundation is what caught things on fire and exploded. Right. And now you have all these companion pieces that all work together under the name Pura. Talk to right. us about what Pura means to Premier. We are Premier B products but we wanted to create a whole product line. We still make the same great foundation, but we call it Puracell now. You know, because it we we listened to Mother Nature. That what that's what drove us to do the foundation the way we did. Sure. There's nothing more pure than Mother Nature. Right. Pura. Puracell foundation and our high bodies are going to be called Pura Hive and our frames are Pura Frame. So we have the Pura line. That's awesome. It all it, it fits together, you know. One of my favorite pairings is peanut butter and honey. Um, the next best thing to that would definitely be the Pura line, where it's, it's the Pura Hive, the Pura Frame, yep. Pura Cell all working together. The bees love it, the beekeeper love it. It's a win-win. Yep, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been fun. It just kind of seems like it came together. Yeah. You know, it was just kind of supposed to be, and yep. okay, here we go. You could almost say, Jeff, it was meant to be it was meant pun to intended be yeah <laughs> <laughs> well jeff hey thanks for uh, for taking the time out uh to show us a good time out here in the field working the dogs uh stirring up some pheasants um and and, and getting a, a much closer look to see um how these pure products um are assembled and put together um it, it's been awesome so thanks again for having us out you know what greg i appreciate you coming out here uh it has been just an absolute blast spending a couple of days out in the field shooting pheasants and having fun um, i thank you for coming out and uh, this is only the first time it will happen i'm looking again. forward to many more yep. it's been a few years um, since the burns family has had a gun dog I, I i can just see future visits with maybe one or two short hairs i think that that <laughs> needs to be a goal hank and ellie love running around with their short oh, hair too that's awesome um, if you want more information on where to learn more about uh, uh, Pure Hive, you can go to premierbproducts.com. If you're in the Ohio area and you're looking for uh, the Pura uh, line of woodenware, you can visit us at naturesimagefarm.com. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, remember to be the lighthouse and be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.